Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, part three in our most hilarious movie bracket. Today, we already spent time, parts one and two, which you can find in the description of this video or podcast, broke down 2000 to 2009. We whittled down the shortlist and came up with a top 70 movies-ish. I will eventually put those into one side of the bracket of 64. Today, we begin from 1990 through 1999, the most hilarious movie of the 1990s. And that is the bracket, by the way. It's not the best movie or the best movie that is also a comedy. It is the funniest movie of the 1990s. So if you want to get into a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars, here's what you do. You subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. You leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you enjoy about the Pat Mayo Experience. Boom. You're in that draw for 100 DK bucks. You want to get into a draw for 20 bucks? If you're watching this video, you smash that like button. You leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. And for the 1990s most hilarious movie bracket, who are your four one seeds? I want to hear what you guys have to say in that comment section. And you'll be in a draw for 20 DK bucks as well. Eventually, sports will return. I've heard this on good authority. <laughs> I don't know when exactly, but they're going to return. So you're going to want to bank those DK bucks for the moment. Uh, to help me break this all down, we had to go, we skewed young for the 2000 show, uh, younger than me. Right. So I feel like I had to skew older than me a little <laughs> bit for the, uh, and I'm not like, I'm not getting like an 80 year old on here, but Adam Rank from the NFL Network. I thought you were the perfect person to talk like, to what's this up, about. Boomer? <laughs> yeah, but you, know, you got your boomer sensibilities in you, but you're slightly older than me. That's check one. And I mean, yes. outside of your work for NFL Network and Fantasy, you're a touring stand up comedian as I know it. That's what people tell me. Yes. I, yeah. You know what? I had one of the last comedy shows in LA, which I feel, feel very proud of right before everything was the night before it was shut down. We were out there. And even then we were like, should we be doing this? Like, no, nope, we're doing it, but yeah. So we're, I'm happy to, uh, happy to join you on this. This is, this is a, this is a momentous occasion. This is the Pat Mayo experience for Search for more content. So joining us, <laughs> the third member of the team to help us whittle down this list for the 1990s. It is, you know him, Tim Andergust. Tim Andergust. That's not my name. No, I, I'm pretty sure people think that is your name and know that is your name. So you're lying no. to the people, Tim. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right. So we're going to start the 1990s the same way that we started the 2000s. And Rank, we're going to go with you on this one to start off. Okay. We need to come up with region names. Now, Ooh. we're, we're going to name it after the people. People can check out the 2000s show to see who we came up with for the four regions. So the most influential people in the 1990s in terms of comedy are going to get the region names. It doesn't mean their movies need to appear in that bracket. You know, when I went to go see... When Tim and I actually went to the tournament, we went to like the, the Southeast tournament, but like Washington was in it. So, you know, it, right. it, it's, it's for names only. I think... The king of the 1990s comes down to two people. And I think there's someone who's close as a third, then the, there's a debate for four. But the two auto region names, I think, have to go to Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler. Okay. Adam Sandler was one that jumped out to me. I was actually thinking if Lauren Michaels would end up being one of them because he was kind of the godfather for Adam Sandler and Michael Myers and everybody who came out of the 90s and did all those movies. But then he was also responsible for It's Pat, so then maybe he gets taken away for that. It, it, it's Pat, and he probably gave Martin Short money to make Clifford, so that's probably not good news. <laughs> so, Tim, would you agree with those two, or would you include anyone else in it? Those two definitely have to be there. Like, they're the one and two, right? I yeah. think so. Okay, so third, I actually, maybe Lauren Michaels is a good way to put this in, because third, I actually had Mike Myers, and then fourth... Okay. Fourth, I had it down between one, two, three, four, five people. So I had Chris Farley, who, well, not the star of a ton of movies, and obviously SNL doesn't count because it's not a movie. This is a movie bracket. He's just in a lot of funny movies, even if it's like a yes. spot role somewhere. A lot like Paul Rudd in the 2000s. Bill yeah. Murray, a very underrated 1990s. We remember him from, like, all the great movies from the 80s, the 90s, all pretty good, too. The Farley Brothers could be one. Mm. Kevin Smith could be one. There it is. Okay, got it. Or Matt Stone and Trey Parker, depending Ooh. on how much you enjoy Orgasmo. <laughs> <laughs> I liked basketball. What do you like? 
Oh, no, that, were, that, that, oh, Basketball is auto. You have South Park, the movie, Basketball, and Orgasmo. Those would be your three for, for at least Trey Parker. Gosh, Orgasmo was such a... So, <laughs> so ahead of his time. Get this... What, what can I say? Can I work blue here? I don't want to shout out any oh, lines that might, no, might have to get... On the Pat Mayo experience, you can fucking swear as much as you want, Mr. Okay, Parker. good. <laughs> so then get the stunt cock. That's what we do. <laughs> you just make that its own region? <laughs> the stunt cock. Is region four. So would you agree Mike Myers is number three here? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Tim? Absolutely. I guess. I think I would have gone Farley, but Mike Myers is fine. So you know what I think? Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say Chris Farley was in a lot of great movies, as you said. A lot of a lot of the same themes, though. If you're going Tommy Boy, Black Sheep, where they're kind of remaking the same movie over and over again. Whereas Michael Myers, I know that he's playing characters, but it's iconic characters like Austin Powers and Wayne's World, like two vastly different things that he was able to make work. And, you know, well, I think the Love Guru came out in the 2000s, so hopefully that doesn't hurt him at all. But I think Michael Myers... All right, so let's go through Mike Myers to begin with. That's who we'll start with here. And we'll go, we'll circle back to Sandler and Jim Carrey just to see how many of their movies are going to end up in the top 64. So the Mike Myers re- has Wayne's World 1 and Wayne's World 2. Those are both yeah. probably going to be in the top. I don't know. If, would you put Wayne's World 2 into the top 64, do you think? I think it's on the bubble. <laughs> I think it's out. I mean, I want to put so, like, I, I think So I Married an Axe Murderer is, I, I'm somewhere in the middle, which is a really weird stance on that movie. Some people think it's like, should be a one seed and other people don't find it funny at all. I'm somewhere in the middle. I feel like that's a, that's an eight seed in the 64 movie bracket. I feel like it could be a 12 seed that goes on a run. It's weirdly popular. <laughs> Cause it's funny. Yeah. It's funnier than Wayne's that's world like, too. So I'm going to put Wayne's definitely. world too on the fringe here. Right. Um, and then, so I married an ax murder that <laughs> might get in Austin powers one and Austin powers two. Tim. They probably both get in. I would put them both in. I mean, we discussed in the 2000s that gold member is unwatchable, but one and two are excellent. Yes. I, I have a heavy lean to the original Austin Powers, international man of mystery over the spy who shagged me. I tend to agree. Okay. Ah, I, this, this, yeah, you're right. You're right. But... Ah, the, the spy who shagged me has some, some great moments that you kind of... I don't know that you don't remember, but you're like, it's actually a really good standalone. If that was the only Austin Powers you had ever been exposed to, you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty good. But, you know, I understand the original. The, nothing's going to top the original. No, I mean, Michael Myers. I mean, it, it just depends on how you feel about, I guess, Bond movies and spy movies to begin with, where the first one is pretty much just a satire of that, where the rest of them are sort of like their own things at that point. Right, exactly. That makes sense. So the Chris Farley bracket side of things here movies chris farley appeared in in the 1990s before his untimely death wayne's world wayne's world 2 coneheads billy madison airheads tommy boy black sheep beverly hills ninja the unwatchable almost heroes and a real good turn in dirty work oh dirty work yeah he again he appeared in a lot of great movies but didn't really star in them Except for obviously Tommy Boy and Black Sheep, and Beverly Hills Ninja. Beverly Hills Ninja. Yeah. Beverly Hills Ninja. Excuse me. I mean, you can't just overlook Haru, the White Ninja, for sure. <laughs> so, Tim, do you have a? Do you think any of those like throw out the cameo ones? Because like when we talk about the overall one seeds, there's one of these that is definitely in it. Do you think that Tommy Boy, Black Sheep, or Beverly Hills Ninja is in contention for a one seed? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No. Would you even put Black Sheep into the bracket because it's yes. so close to Tommy Boy? Yes, because it's 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 really funny. If you just watch the movie, it makes you laugh. It's hilarious. Rank, would you throw it in? I'm trying to think. Black Sheep does have some great moments. Obviously, Boot Busey had a great turn in that one, and they I that yeah, because the scene where he goes out where he's hanging out with Mud Honey. <laughs> and he's out there doing the rally and he does the kill whitey. And they're like, no, like that part of it right there. I think kind of, yeah, I go, I, I feel that's a solid top 64 movie for sure. All right. It's going in the 64 bracket. I'm trying to whittle these down as we go along. So Bill Murray, 
in the 1990s. We have What About Bob, Groundhog Day, the excellent Kingpin, Space Jam, The Man Who Knew Too Little, Wild Things, which is kind of funny at certain points just to watch it again. (laughs) I watched it like, I don't know. Over the Christmas break, I ended up watching Wild Things. Like, it's kind of funny. Not like a terrible movie either. And it's one of those movies that I had to sneak into when I was a kid because it had Denise Richards and Neb Campbell making out. So, you know, that, that was rated R. Uh, and then Rushmore, which is probably uh. like we put Tenenbaums in the bracket for the 2000s. I think Rushmore ends up in the bracket here, too. Rushmore's really funny. Yeah. Hysterical movie. And when you're going through that roster, it is kind of amazing of how well he had done in the 1990s, where everybody thinks of, you know, Caddyshack and some of his 80s movies. When you look at these 90s movies, I think that he's actually better in this decade. And I think obviously Groundhog Day is something that's going to be near and dear to my heart for a long time. But I'm like, and of course, Kingpin, Ernie McCracken. Like, it's hard. It's hard for me to, to, to identify a character that I liked more than the big urn. So I, I think that his 90s resume is very strong. I mean, yeah, I think Groundhog Day's got a case to be a one seed. I think so, too. Yeah. But I when think I, it might be the weakest one seed. It might be the fourth one seed. It might be the, 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 the division, the bracket they would give Duke. But I still think <laughs> the one seed in, in, some, uh, in some region. Hmm. Well, when we, we'll get into the one seed discussion in a second, because I want to get to the Fairley brothers here. They do Dumb and Dumber, then Kingpin, Something About Mary, then Outside Providence, which I think is only funny if you're from New England. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> so I don't find it super funny. But Kingpin is probably the lesser of those three big ones. But if you include that they made so many influential movies that were hilarious, and then Bill Murray is also in it, that it, Kingpin might be able to might be able to squeeze in a one seed just by including two people from those regions, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I feel that when one of your worst movies is Kingpins, like you're you're doing something correct. And for something about Mary is very rewatchable, but Kingpin to me is always one of those stop and watch, try to seek it out. It is so funny. And I believe that there's so many different parts of it. Like it just... It's hard to explain, but like this and still dropping lines from it. I always use it too with the whole thing about like, you know what? There comes a time when a bowler must face the music. And today that bowler is you. I, I, that's when I use that to discipline my children. I use it at work. Like I just, it's so applicable, even though we're not bowling. I just think that some stupid things like that just continue to stick with it. You must have knocked something loose, Tiger. Like, come on. Like there's so many, I know we're going to go through a lot of these. I ain't Kingpin might actually be their best movie. I can see that too, but like Dumb and Dumber and Something About Mary are, I mean, you think like classic 90s comedies, like those are two of the 10 people talk about. And And those two are going to roll in the bracket. No matter where you put them, they're going to roll. You think so? Oh, definitely. If we had to pick a one seed from those two, I think it would be Dumb and Dumber though, wouldn't it? I agree. I think Dumb and Dumber has to be one of the four seeds or one of the one seeds. But is it, I mean, we'll do Jim Carrey after this, but do you think it's Jim Carrey's representative as a one seed rank or is it, it Ace Ventura? Ooh, God. Ah. Yeah, I think it's got to be Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, it's it's tough. Like how strong he was in the 90s. And The Mask is also another, I don't know if that counts. That counts as a funny movie, I hope. He was yeah. doing things that I do, but I, I think Dumb and Dumber comes back. There's... No, the Dumb and Dumber holds up. Something about Mary is great. And I actually watched it not too long ago. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is still great. But Dumb and Dumber to me, that's an all time. That's that's a definite one seed for me. Yeah, I think so too. So let's knock out Kevin Smith here before we finish this off. Clerks, Dogma, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy. Uh, I'm big on Clerks too. It's going to be one of my, I mean, I'm not going to overseed it in the 2000s bracket, but. I don't like any of these Kevin Smith movies. And I know I'm in a minority of that. People love Kevin Smith. Are you a Kevin Smith guy? Spickety bam down like the Death Star. Yeah. All of them. I'm here for all of them. I'm watching Dogma. I think Dogma was a very clever movie. And I understand, you know, you're talking about outside Providence where it's funny to people who are from New England. I'm not Catholic, but I grew up in a town that was predominantly Catholic. So all that stuff resonated with me. And so I love Dogma. I thought it was incredibly, incredibly clever. 
And I understand that a lot of people aren't going to be attach themselves to it, but I love that. And I loved mall rats chasing Amy to me was actually the one of his movies where I could take her leave. Where you're like, yeah, whatever. But the all rest right. of them I'm all in for. All right, so Tim, are you, do you dabble with any Kevin Smith? Not really, other than Clerks 2. It's like the only one I even remotely like. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm on the same page as Tim here. But I know that these are movies that should be included. Would you include all three of Clerks, Small Rats, and Dogma Rank? Or would you just put throw two of them in, seed one of them in a higher, like, seed Clerks is like a six and Mall Rats is like a 13? Or, and just leave Dogma out? Do you think that's fair? I think it's fair to leave Dogma out. We'll have to, they're on the bubble. They're, it's a definite bubble movie. And I understand that I will be the guy that's pounding the table for it. But I understand where everybody's coming from. I should also let you know, I, I like the Clerks animated series as well. So I'm, I am probably, I'm glad that Kevin Smith has some representation here. Somebody that can, that can uh, hit the bang the table here for him because I really loved all of his movies. By the, Mall Rats is so great. Like sitting there, the, Playing Sega, and I got the Hartford, the whale beating Vancouver by 16 goals. That never happens. Like that kind of stuff, like that, that speaks to me. Jason Lee, that character, that slacker character speaks to me. Like if we were doing a a a bracket based on characters alone, I think that Brody would be one that I would consider one of the best of all times as a recurring character in a movie series. So I'm I'm here for all of that. So I'm the Kevin Smith guy. I will happily carry that mantle. So it's funny you mentioned like growing up. I grew up Catholic, but like, you know, went to church, went to Sunday school to a point that I just kind of stopped going. So my grandparents, very Catholic. So I get you on that angle. It seems very insular in that way. Tim, what was the movie we talked about in the 2000s that is very clear, like only Jewish people like? Oh, darn it. Don't mess with the Zohan. Yeah, that was it. Like it was, it was, the, we called it the Dave Matthews band of movies. So hey, maybe dogma is that, but for Catholics. Kind of. Well, I'm, I was, pre I was, or still, I guess you grow up this way. I'm Presbyterian, which is kind of a Catholic life. It's kind of like being Catholic without the guilt. So <laughs> a lot of that's still trying to, it still translates. So yes, if you're, it's one of those things that really does like, cause a lot of the, the nuances of it, like my, my mother-in-law is a, she's a principal of a Christian school and she's uh she grew up Catholic and I made her watch that movie and as horrified as she was by it, <laughs> realized like, this is actually kind of funny. Like that's, that makes, that's cute. That's funny. Like I get it. I'm like, he's acknowledging that there's a God, like he's not being blasted. Well, I guess a little bit, but you know, Chris Rock is great in that movie. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a dogma guy. So I'm, I'm going to put them on the bubble. We'll see how this all shakes out and where I'll have to put them. Well, as we did in the 2000s, maybe you can find a complimentary movie with it. And that's the play in game. There you go. Yeah, that's that's always acceptable. Now, there's one other name in terms of regions that we could technically name stuff after. Tim, do you want to take a guess at who that is? Eddie Murphy? No. I'm trying to think of Eddie Murphy's from besides Bowfinger. What was like he? The Nutty it? Professors. The Nutty Professor even going to make the top sixty-four? I would say no. Mm, I would say it probably does. I don't know. So we have two movies from Eddie Murphy. I feel like there's other ones. Uh, so, Rank, do you, can you think of who it might be? Doctor Doolittle from the '90s. Who we'd name a bracket after? I don't yeah, know. If, I can't Kevin's even. I can't even think if any of his movies will make the top 64. He's just in a lot of comedies in which he stars in, in the 90s. Well, I don't know if Nick Cage's movies count as comedies because... Like, I mean, there's there's a 50-50 chance funny. you're friends with this guy. Oh, my God. It's Pauly oh Shore. Oh, my God. Pauly Shore. Damn it. So you go Encino Man, Biodome, Jury Duty, yeah. Son-in-Law, In the Army Now. I like 100%. all three. Despite not being good movies, I like all five of those movies. What are you talking about? What do you mean not good movies? What's <laughs> not good about Son-in-Law and Sino Man? Those are two all-timers. And I saw Biodome in the theater, dog. <laughs> so I'm good with Polly Shore. And I'm I'm acquaintances with him. He's done. I I actually was at the Brea Improv one time and accidentally walked in on the green in the green room. When he, because he did the first two shows, I was doing like a midnight show and I came in and 
he was he wasn't doing he was just sitting there and i was like walking and i'm like oh hey paulie shore and i just kind of walked out and like left and he was he came by he was like no dude it's totally cool he's like no big deal i'm like i'm so sorry like i didn't even think about that he's like no bro you're all good so uh he's super nice and he's still super funny is he someone that you refer to by first and last name at all times? Like a lot of people just call me Pat Mayo. No one calls me. People either call me Mayo. Very few people call me Pat. My mom calls me Patrick. But for a lot of people, they say, hey, what's going on, Pat Mayo? It's really weird. Oh, 100%. It's Polly Shore. Like that's the only, like you would never refer to him as Polly. You would never refer to him as Shore. So yeah, it's always Polly Shore. Like the same way that I'm always ranked. Like nobody calls me by my first name. And it's very rare somebody does, but it's always rank. And it's like, it's one of those things. So Pauly Shore, yes. I have a boss too named Rick Savage, former LA DJ out here, but it's always Rick Savage. It's never Rick. It's never Savage. It's always Rick Savage. Hey. So there's a certain level. Yeah, it's a certain, you need a certain type of easy to pronounce name to pull it off as well. Like if I didn't go by Pat and I went by Patrick all the time, no one would call me Patrick Mayo. Pat Mayo, super easy to say. You have the three syllables. 100%. It's good. Tim, of those five Pauly Shore movies, is there any that you think you would include here? No, I don't particularly love any of them. I should have said Robin Williams earlier when you asked me list of people who had great movies in the 90s that are comedies because he's right there. I can only think of one movie that's like a big in for Robin Williams in the 90s. Maybe I'm misremembering the 90s. That's like a definite lock is a close to a one seed, but that's it. Oh, I think Aladdin has a case to be there. I think the birdcage has a case to be there. The birdcage is the answer to that question. Mrs. Doubtfire is going to get in the bracket and is going to roll. I assure you, if it gets in the bracket, like (laughs) it is, it's not, if it gets in, it's going to win. People love that movie and it will win multiple rounds. I, I, I gotta ask, is the part when he burns his fake boobs off, like the funniest thing you've ever seen in a movie, according to you? No, no, that, that that movie is hilarious. It's a cult classic. It's not a cult classic, it's a classic. It's on TV all the time. I mean, there's a lot of movies that are on TV all the time. Most of them aren't very good. People like that movie. It's fine. I, I, I had that on in like a bubble to get into the 60s. Rank, would you throw Mrs. Doubtfire in? I honestly don't like Mrs. Doubtfire. That's really not one. Of, I think Robin Williams is amazing. He's one of my favorites of all time. But that one is one where I'm like, nope can't get into it aladdin yeah of course was i upset when will smith took over sure but it's mrs doubtfire to me i don't know it just i don't know i i watch a lot of dumb movies i was just sitting here campaigning for encino man and biodome <laughs> by the way son-in-law is getting into the tournament oh, yeah, it so, has to be. So son-in-law is the clear winner of this although i think biodome is my favorite of these movies 100 percent Maybe we have a Polly so Shore. Good. Maybe we th- put in Son in Law and have an Encino Man Biodome play in game. I don't hate that at all. So that, that's what's going to happen here in the 90s bracket the <laughs> Polly Shore play in versus each other. So I can go that. So we'll circle back to what we are going to name the fourth region about. So let's get to Jim Carrey because I think this is important because now we're talking about one seeds and we're talking about. You know, probably the, him and Sandler are like 1A and 1B of the most influential people of this decade in terms of comedy. And I find it hard to say like Aladdin is going, to, I hadn't even really considered it for the top 64 because it's not hilarious. Yeah, it's cute, but yeah, it's, it's not hilarious. Yeah, like, you know, Ace Ventura 2 is not going to make the list, but it's probably more hilarious. Like, the, by the, the way, go ahead. I was also going to say when you were thinking of names to put out there, Another name that had came to mind was Chris Tucker because he was in Friday and, and money and talks Ru- and rush hour and I'm money, like, gosh, money talks better than rush hour. All right. Well, well I, I just, I'm really, I, thinking, you I'm really all, stunned me there. No. I, I am all in on Charlie Sheen. All right. Fair enough. Not enough to argue about it. I'm, but I just, th- I, I think again, for 90s actors, I think Chris Tucker is also one of those guys who I don't think that he's going to knock any of these people out. And I know we're going to get Jim Carrey here for a second, but he's just somebody else, the name to consider and somebody who did very well during this decade. Yeah. Uh, another guy you could throw into that too would be Martin Lawrence. Who I have a bunch of his movies on here that mm-hmm. like Blue Streak and Nothing to Blue Lose. Blue Streak. 
Love Blue Streak, love nothing to lose, and obviously like, even both Bad Boys movies are like action comedies in the same way that like Rush Hour is. 100%. Yeah, that's true. So, Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura 2, When Nature Calls, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, Cable Guy, Liar Ooh. Liar. Liar Liar. Liar Liar is great. Such a good movie. Like, yeah, ah. those are all, all, I like all those movies. I even like The Cable Guy, despite everyone else hating it. I like it. I feel like the cable I guy. I feel like the cable guy needs representation in the top sixty-four somewhere because it's it's almost like the Kevin Smith movies. There's a lot of people who really like it, uh, and then there's just people who despise it as well. So it'd be interesting to see. Maybe that's the play-in game: Dogma versus Cable Guy. Ooh, that's an interest. Yeah, that's an interesting one, right? I mean, obviously, I would go Dogma, but yeah, that's a that's a fair that's a fair comparable movie of a, a cult classic type. Although I think more people. Are into cable guy, but I understand. I, I get it. Yeah, maybe they don't. Maybe the maybe the love for Kevin Smith is more than we think. So, Tim, out of those Jim Carrey movies, which ones are out? Because I would say Ace Ventura Two is out. I agree, and that might be it. I would have the mask as maybe a fringe. I think. The I think it gets in. I think it's good enough. Rank. The mask is a definite. I like the mask. I like his performance in the mask, but it's a it's a definite bubble movie for me. It, it's right around the fringes. It depends on how like deep we can get into this and try to figure all of it out. If it actually cracks a top sixty eight or top seventy or makes that short list, and that that's what the purpose of, of the show is for is to to figure out what goes in the bracket and what doesn't. But we have Ace Ventura. That's in contention for a while. I think that Dumb and Dumber, Ace Ventura, and Liar Liar could all be potential number ones, but they'll all probably end up being a one, a two, and a three, or a one, a three, and a four, or something like that, once I eventually do the seeding. Do you have a case to be made for which one of these should be the number one? You know what you're... Tim. Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber has to be the one. It's I hilarious. You, know, you talked about it earlier. It's... It, that's a movie where like you start to cry. You laugh so hard when you re when you rewatch it at, at various different stages in a way that, while I really like Ace Ventura and I would vote for it to go several rounds, it doesn't have the same sort of hilarity factor in terms of like making me cry. I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. There really is something to be said for a movie like Ace Ventura, where you kind of want it, you, you kind of get the joke at a certain point and you're like, okay, yeah, this is it. Like, let's just get to the conclusion. Where's the goddamn dolphin. Okay. Let's go. We're <laughs> dumb and dumber. No, and uh, Kingpin's a lot like this too, where it's like a rolling wave of hilarity. You don't know kind of how it's going to end. You're kind of like, Oh my gosh. I think like something else that like, it's so offbeat. Like when you think of the diner scene or the guys in the, in the van and here's the loudest, here's the most annoying sound in the world and how different that is from like, Jeff Bridges getting his tongue stuck on a pole. Like there's just so many different parts of that movie that are so fantastic. You're like, God, you know, watching him, you're like, it's a, it's a full on event. So I think that those movies, and I think it goes to the Farley brothers for that is the way they construct them. Yeah. That just to make them stronger movies from start to finish. And it's also funny too, when you're talking about like which Jim, it's almost like Jim carries a conference and it's like, well, we can't have two ACC teams be the top of oh, them. They do it all the time, but they're like, okay, you got to have a big 12. You got to have, you know, it's like that. So it is with these movies as well. But I think the Dumb and Dumber is the one for me. Yeah. Okay. So Dumb and Dumber will take seed will be the first official one seed in the nineties bracket. So that, that we can agree on. We'll try to hash out the rest later. Adam Sandler movies from the 1990s. We have Airheads, Coneheads, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, Bulletproof, Wedding Singer. He was in Dirty Work. Water Boy, Big Daddy, and a cameo in Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. What is, I think this comes down to, did you like Happy Gilmore or did you like Billy Madison more, Tim? I'm on Team Billy Madison as the, as the best of those movies. I love, I love Happy Gilmore. I have to say Billy Madison as well. I think Billy Matt, they just... Again, so many different things. I, I think both movies are obviously very quotable, very memorable, but I really love Billy Madison. There were just, there's so much stuff going on. And you think of like Eric Buscemi with having his list. <laughs> what you said, sir, was the dumbest thing. <laughs> was a, people are now done like that whole, that whole monologue, that 
I know that when I do some of the, um, there's a bit that I do on Good Morning Football Weekend every year when there's a when there's a uh, when there's a London game. We do Adam Rankspear, and I model it over Eric and Billy Madison's scene where he's overacting the, the Shakespeare part of it, the Hamlet yeah. part. Of it. Yes, I model. I I legitimately model myself after that. So I I I could almost see that. Two Adam Sandler movies become one seeds. But if I had to pick one, if I had to go in right now and sit down and watch and you're like, which movie do you want to watch right now? For me, it's going to be Billy Madison. So I'm on Team Happy Gilmore, but I've been outvoted here. So Billy Madison will, unless everyone wants to make, make a case for the wedding singer or water boy to be the one seed from the Sandler bracket. But I think it comes down to, well, I do love Eric. Shooter McGavin is just a better villain. Oh, gosh. Sure. They're both great movies, but... They're not, I don't know. Like I said, given that I don't even think that Billy Madison is, the, or sorry, I don't even think that uh, Happy Gilmore is the best golf comedy movie of all time. I'm not going to give it a nod. Tim, over I, Billy. Tim, I keep telling you the legend of beggar Vance is not a comedy. No, Caddyshack. <laughs> funny. That's, that's all there is to it. I, you know, it's, I feel that if we end up, I know. Uh, listen, I love Billy Madison. I think it's a better. I, I it's the movie I would want to watch. When you post the brackets, if Happy Gilmore is number is number two behind Billy Madison, I think a lot of a lot of the smart people will be in agreement with it. But I think the overwhelming majority will be like, "How the f is Happy Gilmore not the number one seat?" Well, yeah, you, ha you have to remember this bracket is entirely designed to trigger people and get them talking and like, I hate this bracket. Look at me repost it on Twitter. I mean, that's the whole yeah. design of this. <laughs> and it's it's Billy Madison is the which what would have happened this year is the San Diego State getting a one seed where people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, this is not cool. But again, like if I'm a purist and I'm sitting here voting for it, I would vote Billy Madison as my one seed because if I, they were if they were in a bracket. And you match them up, I would be voting Billy Madison. Yeah, I mean, that's the way that you need to think about this. I think that there is a non-zero chance that once we do the entire 90s bracket, that Billy Madison actually wins. You believe they, it does win? or has I, it? it I, I, I'd say it has a 10% chance of winning. Yeah, you're... I guess, all right. I see what you're saying, yes. It's going to be something, because again, the the... The, the will of the masses, but we also, you know, there's no accounting for taste. And I, again, though, I have to do it. If I, but you're bringing me in to give me my perspective. And if this is uh, what, how I think people are going to vote compared to how I feel these about these movies, I'm going Billy Madison. And I think a 10% chance, like whatever, roll the dice. Let's see how it goes. I will be stomping for Billy Madison. Okay, so Tim, is there any other Sandler movie which should be in the realm of a one seed? Because I don't think that there is. Not a one seed, no. But movies that are getting in this bracket from Adam Sandler are going to be Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, Wedding Singer, Dirty Work, Waterboy, Big Daddy. Just off the hop. I think. Yeah, I agree. All of those have to be in. And like Deuce Bigelow might even crack the top 64. I don't know about that rank, but I, I'm, I'm still yeah. It's fringy. Yeah, that's fringy. If we're going to go Rob Schneider movies, wouldn't the animal have a better chance? Was that 99 or was that 2000? Oh, uh, well. No, it was, ooh, two, it, it was 2001. That's also not a funny movie. Like, it's it's funny in no, the same way terrible. Deuce Bigelow is. <laughs> yes, but it had Colleen from Survivor, so that's... It did, you know, didn't it? I totally only forgot about that. The only memorable thing about that movie was that she, you're like, because then it was like, then everybody who went on a reality TV show thought they were going to be a movie star. And I think that she, The Miz, and the girl from Real World San Diego are the only ones that have ever pulled that off. Oh, Jamie Chung? Jamie Chung, yes. Yeah, one of the, one of the guys from Real World Seattle is like a co Republican congressman now. Sean Duffy? He yeah. had to retire already. Oh, did he really? Oh. He he oh, yeah. he like was a representative for a while though, wasn't he? Yeah, in Wisconsin, and his wife was from Real World San Francisco, and they have like twenty kids. And he just recently retired. I know because I'll see him on you know CNN or Chris Cuomo or somebody like that. 
So I do know that. That's that's this is actually something we should we could actually break down a bracket of real world road rules people as to who has the best career. Although I'm going to be stumping for the Miz. I I mean, well, there's a bracket that's going on right now. I'm actually going to be doing a show on it where there's a 64 bracket female challenger of all time, but it's like and a male one, but it's like head to head elimination who would win. And here's the thing: the Miz, not great. On the challenge. Like, he's a fun character. He's not, like, super yeah. good at all the challenges. No. Not at all. Like, he's no Jordan. So no. like, that's the... Jordan, by the way, last season pretty much cemented it as, like, the best guy ever. And I know this isn't what we were supposed to be talking about today, but... <laughs> the the new season starts very soon, by the way. They should have moved that up. Uh, they actually, everybody's they... social distancing. Well, what, what ended up happening was because Viacom owns both, they released that new season of Survivor, and for whatever reason, they put Survivor in the same slot as the challenge, like Wednesday nights at nine or whatever it is, that they were just mm-hmm. like, well, let's, let's let Survivor peter out a little bit because that's going to get huge ratings. We don't want to take it away from the challenge. And then we'll air them like concurrently for two weeks. Then it'll just be the challenge. I think that was the mindset behind it. Although the whole, the whole season's about them being in like quarantine. It's really bizarre. That is wild. Yeah. So let's get back they to knew. movies. Movies of okay. the day. Sorry, yeah. guys. They knew. One seeds. Let's talk about the overall one seed. So he's penciled in Tim, Billy Madison, and Dumb and Dumber to be one seeds. I think that there is no doubt that Wayne's World should also be a one seed. I would vote for Wayne's World, yes. So that would leave one open spot. Rank, are you in with Wayne's World being one of the four one seeds? 100% on that. No doubt about it. So now this gets into a funny conversation like we had in the 2000s because you're trying to represent the people who were the most influential during that decade. But then you also have like Borat laying around in the 2000s where you're like, well, it's hilarious. It was probably the most impactful movie of that time. It probably deserves to be a one seed, despite the fact that Sasha Baron Cohen really doesn't do anything else in the decade. So is there anything outside of any movie that we've named so far, Tim, that you think should be in the running for a one seed? Well, let's see here. I Listen, to me, Lebowski is as good as it gets. And I understand why some people wouldn't put Lebowski there, but I also know people who think Lebowski is the funniest comedy of all time. So I think it has a groundswell. Uh, Other than that. By the way, Lebowski was my choice to be the fourth one seed in this as well. Rank, where would you go? I would go with Office Space. Yep. (laughs) That's even though strong candidate. Even though Ron Livingston didn't do much outside of that or Swingers. He was in Band of Brothers. My mistake. You're absolutely correct. I well, was thinking movie wise, but yes. Yeah. What else is I, he's in something and I mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. He's in That's some right. really depressing movie that I watched. I think it's one of those Jason Reitman movies. One where Charlie's Theron goes crazy and talks to Mackenzie Dern. Oh, he's the right. husband in that. That's right. I forgot the name of the movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's one of the things where when you look back and we were talking about Billy Madison, where the Adam Sandler conference is so heavily weighted that they kind of knock each other off during the season to where you get one of these upstarts where like Lebowski, Office Space, they feel like Gonzaga type movies where it's like, well, they're they're not in a great conference and there's not like a lot of competition for it, but they're so good that they have to be number one seeds. I personally, I'm I'm less of a fan of Lebowski than most people. And I understand that. And I don't want to use that to cloud my judgment or anything because i understand how much how important it is for a lot of people but i think that lebowski and office space to me stand out just about for 90s movies i think if you're ranking the top 10 90s movies i see those two probably being in competition to be one and two so office space lebowski The only other ones that we haven't talked about so far that I would throw into the one mix, one would be Friday and the next one and the next one would be waiting for Guffman. Those aren't one seeds. Friday could be a one seed. Friday for sure. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Definitely. But would you, but would you give Friday the nod over office space? No, is the answer for me personally. No. And I mentioned Groundhog Day, too. I think it's right there with those movies. Yeah, Groundhog Day is probably in that mix as well. 
and Kingpin, like we mentioned, just because it encapsulates everything else. But it's probably not going to be Kingpin. How does how, how do people look back on American Pie? Not as a one seed. No, but it was incredibly popular. So it probably is, people love that movie, I, I think. So it seems like a two or a three seed that will probably have to be listed only because if it doesn't, people will get upset about that too. Good. People get as upset as they want. Like if American Pie is not getting a higher seed than Happy Gilmore is. Like that's just not happening. I wouldn't give it. Like, I, would, I, would, I would like yeah, I haven't and I'm the one who's going to be doing this bracket. Like if we end up where I end up putting American Pie, I'm just off the top of my head, I'm thinking like a six seed, something like that. Does that sound right? I would probably have them a little bit higher. Cause I, I agree with Tim that when it came out, it was it was cherished as one of the funniest movies. Yeah. I think in the time that it came out, like it definitely, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's a, at least at worst a four seed. Well, I mean, just, I'm going to go with office space as the other one seed. So we'll go with dumb and dumber, Billy Madison, Wayne's world and office space as the four one seeds. But if you say like, it could be like a three or a four for American pie, like on that next level down, we now have happy Gilmore, Lebowski, groundhog day, Kingpin, like there's four more. And and we just talked about a lot of good movies along the way too. Like, w- what gets a higher seed, Austin Powers or American Pie? Like, Austin Powers is the answer. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess so. So eventually, like like I said, like a six seed sounds like when I'm starting to think through all of the movies. Like that seems like where it's going to get flushed out. Okay, I think I think Friday has got to at least be a two seed. Yeah, well, I mean, Friday could be Friday is on the fringe of two or three. I think. Definitely, but, yeah. I was going to rank basketball ahead of it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Well, wow, basketball is way funnier. I'm sorry. Basketball is funny. Friday and this, and this is, is the and again, this is the most hilarious movie bracket. Not the best movie bracket. The most hilarious movie. All right. So, Friday is hilarious. I listen. I I am good with giving Friday a two or three seat. I, I I love Friday. <laughs> But you know, there's other movies that are also hilarious that are out there. How about these? Spoof movies from the 90s. You tell me which of these ones should get in. Here's the list. Hot Shots, Hot Shots Part 2, Don't Be a Menace, Robin yeah. Hood, Men in Tights, Dracula, Dead and Loving It, Spy Hard, Naked Gun 2 and a half, The Smell of Fear, Naked Gun 33 and a Third, The Final Insult, also featuring Weird Al Yankovic, CB4, right. Fear of a Black Hat, and Loaded Weapon, the classic... Emilio Estevez, Sam Jackson, Rob. Of course. <laughs> of all of these, I actually think I like Fear of a Black Hat the best. I think Hot Shots definitely has to go in. Hot Shots was really good. Yeah. Uh, and I think Robin Hood Men in Tights should probably go in too. Was Mafia not, was that in the 2000s? Yeah, I'll, you know what? I didn't even think of Mafia. I'll throw that on. Do you think that that deserves a shot? Script-wise, I thought that was hilarious. But execution-wise, it failed? Nah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's just one, you know, I just I just think about it. I'm a big Jay Moore guy, so of course that, that one will always mean more to me, maybe than more than most people, but I thought that that was really good. I thought that don't be a menace to society while you're drinking. Don't be a menace to South Central while you're drinking your juice in the hood also was very good. Not another key movie must have been 2000s. Uh, I have an entire, I guess that could fall under spoof, but I also have a high school slash college movie section of this as well. Yeah, that kind of, that's a spoof. Like Chris Evans first. Uh, that is, al- definitely- that's also 2001. Yeah, sorry. I should have, Sorry, I'm spinning these out. I know. <laughs> rank, rank, rank. It's a podcast. You're good to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a whole list of stuff. And then I, you spring, like when you say like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Like I'd forgotten about Mafia. You brought up spoof movies. And so I didn't, didn't do my due diligence. So I apologize to anybody who's out there being like, Rank's not even paying attention. It's like, I'm trying. There's a thousand movies to go through. Yeah. Um, go ahead. <laughs> no, but I'm like, Trying to think, I think Hot Shots for me, and then I say we yeah, all be a menace. I, I say we all get one from this to nominate. I'm going to nominate Fear of a Black Hat because it's fucking hysterical. Tim, you're going to go with Hot Shots. 
I am. So, Rank, you get to pick one of the spoofs to throw into the bracket. I'll say don't be a menace. Hot take. Don't be a menace is actually not funny like 25 years later. Stop it. It's not good. <laughs> It's it, like it, it wants to be. I'm gonna get you, sucker, and it's not. Eh. And that's I mean, what, okay. and, and if I'm gonna compare the like Wayans movies to each other, like I'm gonna get you, sucker, is way funnier. Okay. So anyway, but it's in the bracket. Thanks to you, it's in the bracket. There it is. All right. Poor Leslie I'm Nielsen. Not- Leslie Nielsen really misses out here. He loses both Naked Guns, and he loses Spy Hard. Like tough, tough break for him. Wait a minute. Now, Leslie Nielsen deserves to be in here. Now, if it was the 80s, he'd be all over it. Yeah. 90s, yeah, kind of. Yeah, Spy Hard was kind of dumb. Yeah. That was not a good one. So, Tim, I'm sure you have a better recollection of this. Like, obviously, the first Naked Gun is the best Naked Gun. The second one's the one with Robert Goulet, right? Correct. And I don't think it's nearly... I think 33 and a, uh, and a third is funnier than two and a half. I agree with you. Definitely, yes. But I don't think it's funny enough to get into the top 64. Completely agree. I, I don't think it's nearly as fun. The original Naked Gun is significantly funnier than the other two. That's the thing. Yes, for sure. Okay, so let's try to finish off this part right now with potential other top 32. So top end seeds. So eight and below kind of thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, yeah. eight style before we get into some of the other categories here. Uh, you hit on one earlier, Tim, when you mentioned Robin Williams. I think The Birdcage is one of the funniest movies ever. And yeah, it, it, hilarious. Should, it should probably be somewhere inside of it should have at least an eight seed. I think. Agreed. A movie like that. De- I mean, it's really funny. My cousin Vinny has definitely got to be on the same page. Ooh, I don't know about that. If not higher, uh, that movie's hilarious. Hilarious. Ooh. Uh, and then like, I would have it like a four or five. seed. that's how funny. I think it is. And then I don't know. I guess the original Home Alone is on that level too. The Home Alone's not that hilarious. It so is. Why, hilarious. Why, do you, why do you think kids' movies are so funny? I don't know why you hate Joe Pesci movies so much. I mean, I just don't. Joe Pesci plays the same person in like every movie, except for weirdly, The Irishman, which wasn't a good movie, but he was really good in it. He's like the yeah. only good part of that movie. I don't know. I thought the best part was the closing credits. <laughs> I mean, we had to wait eight weeks oh, to go watch it. That's the ultimate. That way, quarantine. that way it was over. I was going to say, that's the ultimate quarantine movie. Just start it up today and the quarantine will be over by the time you finish it. Rank. <laughs> would you, would you like, how do you feel about Birdcage, My Cousin Vinny, Home Alone, I suppose? Not a big fan of Home Alone. I don't think, I don't know. It's, again, I. I'm out. Didn't, yeah, I'm out. I'm out on Home Alone. The Birdcage is hilarious. Like, that's definitely a very funny movie. My Cousin Vinny, trying to think of it as like a hilarious movie. I'm not sure that I'm there's it's funny. It's good. I like it as a movie, but when you're talking about like hilarious movies, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm not completely out. It's kind of a bubble team for me, a bubble movie for me, but it's not, it's not one that I think of like hilarious, like hilarious nineties movie. Like even going back to some of the ones we've talked about, like basketball or dirty work or anything like American pie, like that, hilarious movies like i walked out of the movie being like that's one of the funniest movies i've ever seen my cousin Vinny did not get that feeling on it as a matter of fact when you look back there's funny parts to it where you're like hey the two utes and there's certain things but it's a hilarious movie it just i don't i don't i don't look at it that way yeah i had it like when i did my rankings of all this stuff i had it as a very bubble type like you could talk me into throwing it into the 64 but i'd be just as good leaving it out yes so Tim, I'm not, I'm tough the same break, way. tough break for my cousin Vinny. Yeah, evidently. Uh, so other movies that I think that we could throw in as top potential seeds. So I have Night at the Roxbury on here, Waiting for Guffman. I had Lebowski, Half Baked, Swingers, Half Baked, Bowfinger, Swingers. Sister Act, White Men Can't Jump. Oh gosh, sure, yeah. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, which is one definitely, of the better, which is one of the better sequels. For sure. Uh, and then, Tim, your favorite movie of all time. I think we have to give it uh, some credit here. King Ralph. Well, I just think King Ralph is just everything you want in a comedy. I think it's, <laughs> it's from start to finish, just a knee slapper. I love, love, love that movie. Uh, it'd be hard for me to vote for any movie over it in my own personal right, because I love it so much. All right. 
<laughs> uh, it can go into the bracket, into the 64. We'll see how the people feel. That's all it. I want. I don't care if it goes out the first round. I'm okay if it goes out the first round. I just, I need it to be seated somewhere in the draw. Okay, uh, one other movie, Rank, I'll throw onto that list that I read out. How about City Slickers? Yeah, I thought about it with Billy Crystal and with like a lot of Billy Crystal things. It's like, it's amusing. Like, yeah, but I don't remember it being hilarious. Like, I think that it's not, Billy Crystal wasn't in it, but one of the guys who's in City Slickers was in that Jeremy Piven movie with Christian Slater and the hooker dies. Very bad things. Dave, like is, that, it, is it Daniel Stern? Is that who we're Daniel thinking? Stern, yeah. Also in Home Alone. Bad luck for Daniel Stern here. He's getting overlooked. He's getting overlooked in a lot of places. That will do it for part one of the 1990s most hilarious comedy bracket preview. We haven't done the bracket yet, of course. Hit the description of this video or podcast. You can find parts one and two, and it'll be updated once part four is released as well. And I do want to remind everyone to share the show around on social media so we can get the most votes for this as possible. Make it as accurate as possible. And to smash the like button of the episode, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section if you want to get into a draw for 20 DK dollars and tell me who your four number one seeds of the 1990s would be. And if you want to get into a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars, subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. Leave a five-star review. DraftKings handle something you like about the Pat Mayo Experience and you'll be in that draw. You can follow me at the PME on all social media handles, which is where you will find the voting once it comes out. Thank you all for watching. Tune in to part four. It comes out tomorrow. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!